So I, I've been talking about this sort of thing to different people uh, for a long time, uh, and it's great to have got everyone in the same room together and to have heard the challenges that government has thrown at uh, land management uh, as part of our net zero am ambitions, our determination to reverse the declines in biodiversity and uh, to, to make sure that people are part of the conversation as well. Uh, there's a huge audience out there who are passionate about these uplands and uh, they need to know there's a lot of people doing really good work and we've seen both heard in the, in the room but seen out on the on the moor uh, what people are doing there's so much agreement on what we're all trying to achieve there's disagreement about sometimes about the way to achieve it and to have this kind of uh, discussion uh, is so so valuable as a minister most of my meetings are 30 minutes long uh, and to spend 24 hours talking to people and hearing their views their excitement about the future uh, but also their, their worries and their concerns and there's so many so much that I'm going to take back to DEFRA uh, and uh, in conversations with Natural England and, and others make sure that we're doing this as best as we can because it, there's a real urgency a sense of urgency in the room about what we need to do and how we've got to get this right and when there are big organizations that are owning large tracts of land, they've got to understand the different motivations about why people want to do this. Uh, but actually, those motivations have delivered extraordinary results. And just seeing those curly this morning, uh, a declining species, one that, you know, that could go extinct on our watch if the kind of moral management uh, that we've seen today stopped, uh, that would happen. And so it's all about turning that round and making sure uh, that we're all pulling in the same direction. The extreme arguments really do no one any favours. It's about making sure that the goals that we all want to achieve, of seeing us tackle climate change, of seeing there being more, more wildlife for people to enjoy. And it's not just for them to enjoy, there's an economic value to biodiversity restoration. And uh, you've been hearing about that. It's, it's been really uplifting. Mm -hmm. You were talking about that this been an opportunity to listen to the practitioners, the working conservationists on the ground. Um, do you think it's important that policy and, and the politicians, policy makers, listen to the experience of those and, and trust those practitioners to be part of delivering, a very key part of delivering? Yeah, well, one of the reasons I'm here is, is to hear that voice because uh, I do get a lot of people saying to me that you know we're not being listened to. There have been 26 Secretaries of State for either MAF or DEFRA since uh, since I was born, and um, but m by and large most land ownerships have just been two generations over that period of time, and um, they have done extraordinary things at no cost, at no cost to the taxpayer, uh, but of great benefit to the taxpayer, uh, and they need to be listened to and they need to be recognised. One central thing that was discussed was the risk of. A uh, growing risk of wildfire in the Peak District, um, where we are, um, and we were talking about different methods to to combat that, to, to, to mitigate that. And there was a feeling that that all tools should be available, and that we should follow the science in terms of looking at what best solutions might be. Um, yeah, I, I think that's something that uh, I'm really going to take back to to, to Defra. Is first of all the threat. I, you know, I think we only. Really know about it when we see it on the news um, but that there is so much that we can do to keep it off the news um, and I, I think what Wentworth Estates have done uh, is an extraordinary useful piece of work uh, very science-based uh, but recognizing that when it happens if there is a reduced fuel load it, you've got an advantage and also having the people on the ground to deal with it uh, the Fire and Res Rescue Service can't deal with it when it gets to the scale it got at Southerworth in 2018. And so um, people are around who are able to react quickly. I think that's important. And you know, fires don't recognise farms and estate boundaries. They go fast um, everywhere if, they are, if, it, if it's able. And so you know, I think that what we're going to take back is a, is a determination to have massive cross 
sector working together on this and I think Fire and Rescue Service, National Park and others are really important in making sure that a coordinated approach is, is made to stopping or reducing the risk of, of wildfire.